This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. SolarWorks has a large collection of sketch tools, a lot more sketch tools than there are sketch entities. These tools allow you to create from a more basic sketch to a very complex sketch using only a handful of sketch entities such as lines, squares, and circles. In the last section, we started to cover the more commonly used sketch tools. In this section, we're going to continue to explore some of the more common ones. The first one is the offset entities. If you've used any other CAD program, you may be familiar with the concept of offset. Offset entities will offset a face, an edge, a curve, an arc, anything that you have sketched already. So start off, we're going to create just a simple line. If you wanted to create an offset parallel line to this, you could always add a new line and add a dimension to it, but that's a lot of steps. Instead, click the offset entities and in the property manager, select the distance that you wish to offset by and then select the line that you want to offset. You can change the direction by what side you click, but sometimes it's kind of difficult to tell. So you can use the property manager to click the reverse and a preview will show which side the line will be created on. Once you're happy with your offset, click OK. The offset entities command automatically adds an offset relationship between the two lines and a dimension. You can change the offset distance at this point by double clicking on the dimension and pressing enter or clicking the green check mark in the dialog. Once the item is offset, any changes to the original line will be kept with it. However, even if you remove the distance, you cannot freely move the line, and that is because of the offset relation that's been applied to those two lines. If you delete that relation, then the two lines are no longer linked to each other. Even this one can be rotated and change the angle. That's the most basic use for the offset command, and it works for circles the same way. Select your entity, enter your offset distance, say OK. However, there are times that you need a little more control over the offset. So if you select the entity, you've already seen, you can add the dimension or change the reverse. But there's a couple more options in here. First is bidirectional. Bidirectional uses the distance that you set and offsets that distance on both sides of the line. This comes in handy if you're making symmetric parts, or in some cases, if you're doing a layout of a floor plan, you can do a wall structure. Once created, you can independently change the offset distance between the segments. However, they are still linked. Another option that's related to bidirectional is to make construction base. Clicking this will make the original line that you selected, you can barely see it right there, but it makes it a hidden line or a construction line. That way, when you do your extrusion, the original line will not be used in the geometry. When you do the offset, you can also choose to add caps. First one is a circle or an arc cap. This uses the distance between the offset to automatically create a tangent arc. Another option is to do a straight line. This will just connect the two endpoints with a single line. The next command is the mirror command. This allows you to create symmetric sketches from entities you've already created. Select your entities that you sketch, mirror entities, and the mirror property manager will show you what entities have been selected. You can add more or remove any that you don't want. Selecting copy or deselecting copy. When it does the mirror, it will make a new copy of it, creating the same sketch entities on both sides of the mirror line. 
deselecting it will move to the other side. And then the mirror about is the line that will serve as your mirror plane. After creating, it automatically adds symmetric relations between the points of the sketch. So as you change them, both sides will change. This is a very, very handy one. However, there's an additional way to do a mirror that's not listed on the command manager here. If you go into tools, sketch tools, dynamic mirror, dynamic mirror, you pre-select the line that is going to be your mirror line. Then you create your sketch. As you sketch, both sides will be created at the same time. The end result will be the same where the symmetric relation is added. The last couple of tools is the linear sketch pattern and circular sketch pattern. With the linear sketch pattern, selected sketch entities can be arrayed in different directions. You set the distance for the first line along the X axis is the default. So if I wanted to do 50 inches between these circles and I wanted there to be 10, you'll see a preview here showing the direction and the number of ones that we added. And you also have the on screen display here. A couple options in here is the add spacing dimension. After you click OK, it will add initial dimension to show the spacing that can be edited later. Next one is display instance count. This shows a number, once again, to change the number of entities that were arrayed. Angle, even though this is set to follow the X axis, you can change that angle so it will be 30 degrees off of the X axis. The box below the first one is where you can create the same pattern in a perpendicular direction. Process is the same. Set your distance, enter the number, add spacing, display instance count. These are optional, but I prefer to keep them there because they make it easier to edit later on. And change the angle if you need to. Adding the angle between the dimension between the axes will add an angle in this area between the X and the Y that will allow you to change the shape of the overall pattern. Continuing down on the property manager, the entities of pattern will show what you have selected. If there are more entities you wish to add to the array, select the field and select additional entities in the graphics area. Then last is instances to skip. If you want to make like a staggered pattern or not have certain areas have the pattern, you can deselect the little handles here at the bottom and the ones that you have deselected will no longer show in the array. Once you have made all your settings, click the green check mark and everything's been added. At this point, the sketch is still not fully defined. You may need to add additional relations or sketches in order to fully define the sketch. It varies based on the array that you've set up, but after a while you get a pretty good sense of what's going on with those. In the same group of the linear sketch pattern is the circular sketch pattern. This works basically the same. When you create a sketch that you want to array in a polar, select the entities, circular sketch pattern, the property manager is where you set the point which is going to be used as the center point for the revolve. You can change this if you had another point defined in the sketch. You can't just arbitrarily pick a blank spot. You need to have something there. So for instance, you have a predefined point and you want this circle to revolve around that point, select the point. You set the angle of the array. Equal spacing maintains spacing between all of the entities. You can adjust the center point. Add a spacing dimension to the array and even change the number that will be added. Same option for display the instance count is available. And just like with the linear pattern, you can select entities or deselect entities or the instances.
These are the most basic sketch tools that you will be using. 